1 Corinthians 12, verses 2 to 3. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to dumb idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Well, good evening. This evening we're looking at 1 Corinthians and chapter 12 and the first few verses. I picked out verses 2 and 3 for us especially to consider. The first of those verses, Paul reminds the Corinthians where they have come from. They came from worshipping dead idols, stones and statues made of gold. They were influenced by the philosophies of their time and their world. I doubt whether many of us were worshipping idols made of stone or gold before the Lord saved us. Perhaps some were, but most of us weren't. But we were influenced by the thoughts and the philosophies and the thinking of our generation. The hymn writer writes about spirits oppressed by pleasure and greed and material things. And that's where we were before we were saved. We were thinking like the people of this world, worshipping the God of prosperity, of materialism, of hedonism, of uh, fleshly indulgence. And the Lord saved us. If he saved us when we were very young, perhaps we weren't very engaged in those things. He saved us and kept us out of them. If you were saved later in life, you were saved out of them. But we need to look at what the contrast is between those who know the Lord and those who are influenced by the attitudes and philosophies of this world. We, by his grace, have been called into the group who are saved by his grace, and we give him thanks. The next verse is slightly odd. Paul says, no one can say Jesus is accursed by the Holy Spirit. No one can speak by the Holy Spirit and say Jesus is accursed. We would have thought that was obvious. But what's Paul driving at here? I think he's driving at the prophecy of Jesus. Jesus told his disciples that there was coming a day when people would persecute them and throw them in prison and kill them and think they were doing God a favour. And in fact, that was Paul's own testimony, wasn't it? Before he became a Christian, he was imprisoning people. He was uh, witnessing and approving of the death of Stephen. He was seeking to persecute the church because he was zealous for God and he thought he was pleasing God. And Paul is here saying that people may think they're doing the right thing, but by persecuting the church of God, by effectively saying uh, Jesus is cursed, by effectively working against God's will revealed in Jesus, they are not operating in the Holy Spirit, even if they think they are. I guess that's part of Paul's own testimony. And then he goes on to say, but no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, he doesn't mean that people can't say the words. All kinds of people chant out the words. But we can't have the inner experience, that inner confession. We can't uh, surrender our lives to him. So our words are not merely words, but are in a full expression of our hearts. When we say Jesus is Lord, we are confessing that he is our Lord and Saviour. And we have put our trust and our faith in him. No one can do that except by the Holy Spirit. I'm reminded of the hymn that we uh, used on Friday. Um, it says in the second verse, I know not how this saving faith to me he did impart. And the next verse, I know not how the Spirit moves, convincing men of sin, revealing Jesus through the word, creating faith in him. I don't know how these things operate, but I know that the Lord did that. He spoke into our hearts and drew us to himself by his Spirit, that we might be saved. So this evening, we rejoice in what we have been saved from, the attitudes and philosophies of this world. We thank God 
that we have been drawn by his spirit to call and own Jesus as our Lord. And we pray for those who persecute us, that they may see, as the Apostle Paul saw, that they are not pleasing God by persecuting his church, rather that they will come to a point where they surrender to him. Our Father, we thank you for your word to us tonight. We thank you from where you have brought us. We thank you, Lord, that you have saved us out of the philosophies and thinking of this world. We thank you, Lord, that you, by your Spirit, drew us to yourself and gave us the faith to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. <laughs>